Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. November 7th, 2023. Let's get into it. The uh, most significant story that has come out, and this is being reported on by Glenn Beck, so I'm just taking him at his word. But the uh, FCC will be taking over administrative control as of next week of the internet. Now, what does that mean? That means that they can pass any regulation, any law, limit any speech of anybody on anywhere on the internet. If you, un if you don't believe that, there's a little thing called FCC regulations that limit what you can say and what you can't say on the radio. And they say that's in the interest of keeping foul words away from young minds. So I can't imagine where they're going to go with total control of the internet. That's the first story I wanted to talk about. The next thing I wanted to get into is I wanted to talk a bit about Israel. Because I got to thinking about this. So, you know, remember the scene in the Hunger Games when uh, they were uh, making the final charge on, like, I want to call it Emerald City or whatever it was called in that movie, thinking of the Wizard of Oz. But anyway, same thing. And, uh, and so what they did was they sent in the first wave of people and they got massacred. And then they sent in the second wave and they got massacred and they just kept sending bodies over that bridge until they got finally got to the gate where they could blow it open and then the hordes ran in and, and took over the, uh, the the rich people there well i kind of look at that the same way as i look at what's going on in gaza right now because the sacrifice the palestinian people are making is they're putting their bodies out there for the israelis to blow them up wave after wave of palestinians being blown to smithereens that I think about this is as a soldier let me just give you a little story when I was out in the desert we had to strap on and I was young buff I could carry I don't know maybe two or three sections of Bangalore torpedo uh, probably a couple mags of uh, ammunition and uh, and then we would run up to the breach and we take somebody else was carrying a couple of Bangalore's well guess what within Oh, and of course we were shooting at tires, making believe those were Russians coming at us across the way. And uh, I would say we'd be out of ammo in an hour, maybe tops. Okay, well, guess what, Israel, I don't know what their stockpiles are. But if they keep bombing Palestinian civilians, I don't know. I think they're depleting their, uh, their, their loads slowly but surely. And then, of course, then you got Hezbollah shooting rockets in from the north not, not in massive numbers or anything it's not an all-out attack yet but they're depleting the uh, israeli supplies so eventually after Pal after israel is the zionists i'm not talking about the jews or israel as a nation i'm talking about the zionists okay they're the ones in charge of israel right now they're the ones that are bombing the palestinians there's a distinction between a zionist and a jew okay look it up maybe you'll learn a little something but anyway, once the Zionists have expelled all their munitions, guess what? If you ain't got no bullets and the hordes come across, what are they going to do? So I think that the Palestinians, this could be part of the strategy. They are sacrificing themselves to deplete Israel of all its munitions in order so that uh, in the end, 
uh, Israel can be attacked and they won't have anything left. So that's just my take on all of that. So anyway, thought it'd be a different perspective for you. But the thing about the internet, that's the most important because they're going to silence all conservatives, uh, all conservative voices. And in fact, it's coming out now, the amount of censorship that took place back in 2020 was incredible. What the uh, uh, what they did to conservative voices on Twitter and well, of course, right now, Facebook, uh, you know, I don't know if you knew there's another piece of news. I'm not sure I can report on it on, on YouTube, but I can just talk about it. Uh, I won't say what's in it. I don't think I can say what's in it, but the manifesto of that uh, trans uh, person that shot up uh, all those Christian uh, kids has come out. Now, I won't talk about what's in it, so hopefully I won't get a, get a strike on YouTube, but it, it's out. Uh, Charlie Kirk reported on it first. And uh, it's uh, if you want to uh, learn about it, maybe listen to like Glenn Beck, or uh, I'm sure that there might be something on Twitter. Uh, I haven't seen anything posted that posts the uh, words of the manifesto because Google has censored it. You're not going to be able to Google it, Google it, Google it. Do you understand that Google censors everything? People don't understand that. Why you, who owns YouTube, you fools? That's, that's Google. So is Google censoring it and Facebook is censored. So you're not going to find it on those platforms. It might be on Twitter. I don't know. Uh, and I, I guess uh, I'm, I'm sure you can probably find it on Rumble. If you look around there, go to the Rumble channel and find it there. All right. So we'll add to this video as I think of things. But I just wanted to get started with that most of all. Because I'm just thinking... If Israel wants to keep killing Palestinians, eventually they're going to run out of ammo. And then what are they going to do when Hezbollah comes across from the north? And Hezbollah is a much bigger and more well-armed force. They better hold back some munitions to be able to fight Hezbollah. That's all I got to say. All right, I knew the second topic I was going to talk about, a little bit about Ukraine. Because I had a, you know, I guess I'm, it's kind of weird. I'm getting some trolls on, uh, on X now. I guess that once you get above... A certain number of followers <laughs> you get some weird shit you know because nobody's ever paid attention to me about anything but uh anyway so uh but this one guy he was going on about how ukraine is winning the war and it's going to be over soon and russia's on its knees i was like what in the hell where the hell is this guy getting his news from <laughs> i was like what are you kidding me so you know you should i shouldn't even respond to people like that but i told him i said look I said, Russia right now is going to take, uh, it's a city up, up north, I can't remember, Andiev, I think that's the name of it. Anyway, they got it about three quarters of the way surrounded, and uh, they're taking their time. It's going to be the next Bakhmut. The uh, Ukrainians have pulled a lot of forces off of their front lines to try and reinforce it to keep it. That cauldron is slow, slowly uh, closing, and then once the Russians have that, they can go pretty much anywhere. I, I don't think there's much fight left in the Ukrainians. I just, I'm just i actually making this just for that person that was trolling me, so t telling me how I didn't know anything about the war in Ukraine. Uh, you know, it was funny as hell. So, uh, and then of course what will happen is if uh, Ukraine doesn't surrender, I, I imagine the Russians are going to turn south and move down into Odessa and then they'll take Odessa and they'll probably hold up right there you know on the on the bank of the river and wait and see if uh, Ukraine will surrender the other horrific information that I'm getting is that uh, it's a slaughter at this point from what I understand uh, you know it was about uh, eight eight at the beginning of the war I think it might have been seven seven to one seven Ukrainians dying for every Russian casualty or or not dying casualties uh, you know dead and wounded that's what casualties means and uh but now from what i understand it's as high as 25 to 1. so the russians uh they are just slaughtering the ukrainians
showing up on the battlefield is sickening because from what I understand they're seeing 14 year olds out there with guns in their hands because they're conscripting everything they can get their hands on including women and sending them to the front lines uh, Ukraine is so uh, I don't know this thing needs to come to an end I uh, I don't know if, if we could ever get the warmongering Democrats to sue for peace anywhere uh, you know getting back to Israel I wanted to talk about the US troops so they're coming up near you probably not hearing about it but they're coming under more and more fire we need to pull them out the uh, the whole Arab world I hope you understand they, they are incensed by what's going on in Gaza and uh, I'm expecting those bases that base in Syria and of course the ones in Iraq uh, they are completely vulnerable let me let me explain so let's say they, they get they get a major attack there's only a limited amount, once again, the ammo. There's only a limited amount of ammo on those bases. Those thousand soldiers in Syria, yeah, they could put up a good fight for maybe a couple days. Might even make it a week, depending on how the how, how much force is being used against them. They're going to run out of ammo, man. And where are, you, where are they going to get supplies from? Okay, you got the aircraft carriers there. How much do you think you can airlift into those bases? Especially if the Russians activate their air defenses in Syria. If they activate those air defenses, it's going to be impossible to get the get them resupplied. The Russians or the Syrians are going to be shooting U.S. planes out of the air. And then, of course, we got 500 bases around the world. And let me tell you, the whole world hates the United States right now. And there's a lot of hate going on for Israel. People are pulling out their ambassadors. Uh, a lot of people won't even talk to Netanyahu. Man, I'm telling you. If Israel doesn't do a ceasefire and the United States continues to, well, the more bunger and Democrats continue to send bombs to, to Israel, which that's another thing. Even our coastal supplies are running out. We gave everything to Ukraine. So now we've bled ourselves dry in Ukraine and now we're going to bleed ourselves dry in Israel. I'm going to tell you, I, I, if, if the United States gets attacked, I can't imagine we got a whole lot left. Uh, conventionally, of course, we can always nuke them. Well, if you nuke them, they're going to nuke you back. That's the end of the world. Just saying. Yeah, something else just popped into my head. Was the, uh, I can't believe the weirdness of the, uh, the Democrats or the Biden administration. Because they're sending all these bombs and everything to Israel. And then, of course, in the meantime, they're wanting to send humanitarian aid to, to uh, Gaza, which... more than likely but uh, and I don't think they can get it there anyway because uh, uh, the, the Zionists they're not going to stop bombing Gaza N not no way no how until they run out of bombs and my point being but the uh, what we're seeing is we're seeing a lot of anti-semitism in the United States uh, there was a story a guy uh, 
out in Los Angeles, uh, NBC reported he fell down and hit his head. No, a Palestinian <laughs> hit him in the head with a bullhorn. I mean, it was uh, it was brutal, man. I think probably you can find it on X. I think uh, Glenn Beck was reporting on that. And then uh, another, uh, there was another. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if it was a Palestinian, but uh, she drove into a a, a, a Jewish, uh, I want to say synagogue. Drove a car right into it. Said she was infuriated by the Israeli uh, symbols that were on there. <laughs> so you got that going. There was another tech that. Uh, and so all of these are being suppressed by the media. They're not reporting on any of this stuff. Of course, she, and I don't know if they how much they put on mainstream media about that uh, 300,000 or so people that were marching on Washington D.C. That was my last video. I talked about all the demonstrations that are taking place around the world. But what I didn't know was what took place during that demonstration. They actually uh, defaced a lot of the monuments, uh, painted uh, blood, you know, red hand, red painted handprints all over the, uh, the Capitol there. Of course, they were storming the gates and nothing was done. And yet they're worried about Islamophobia. <laughs> I mean, that's, the, that's what you're hearing out of the Democrats. It's Islamophobia. No, it's anti-Semitism, man. Oh my God. And once they take over the internet, that's all you're going to hear about is Islamophobia. You won't hear anti-Semitic. And, and the other thing that gets me, I'm going to head on out, is that Jews vote for Democrats. <laughs> I mean, the Jews are going to get themselves all killed because they vote for Democrats. I don't understand it. Why? I mean, it's, 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 people vote against their own self-interest. Oh my God. And then, of course, the Arabs, they all vote for Democrats. And, you know, of course, it, and so the Democrats are supporting the the extermination of Gaza, and they also they support anti-Semitism, and yet they get all those votes. I, it was kind of like them guys with the Keystone Pipeline. They were all voted Democrat in the first day on the job. <laughs> Biden nuked all their $100,000 paid jobs. I mean, I, I bet they vote Democrat again in 2024, uh, even after they all lost their jobs. I mean, hundreds of people that voted Democrat lost their jobs. Well, probably thousands lost their jobs. And yet people still vote Democrat. Riddle me that. Oh, the last thing I did want to point out was a lot of people keep saying, well, the Republicans, do, they're all for the, you call them warmongering Democrats. Warmongering Democrats for the Republicans, they're warmongers too. Yeah, Lindsey Graham, biggest freaking warmonger I've ever seen. Georgia, you need to get him the hell out. And of course, you got uh, Mittens Romney, but he's going away. So we got one more rhino out of there. Hopefully, Utah will put in somebody with some sanity. Of course, Nikki Haley, yeah, he's a freaking neocon warmonger. So I, I understand where you're coming from. But my point to everybody is, is that all Democrats are warmongers. All Democrats. They like the Borg, man. They, there is no dissension within their ranks. When they vote for a war, they all vote for war. At least on the Republican side. And I want to say the MAGA Republicans, most of all, some of them dissent. Now, it should be a lot more. I ain't gonna lie, we should have a lot more Republicans on the people, the populist side, but we're getting there. But the, the, my point being is that at least you have some Republicans that show some sanity, but not a single Democrat ever does. They're the Borg. You will be assimilated. Whew. You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician, Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.